Colin Parry's 12-year-old son was killed in an IRA bomb attack on the town of Warrington in northwestern England in 1993. Colin Parry then campaigned for peace, and this process brought him face to face with Martin McGuinness. Colin, thank you very much for joining us here on France 24. Give us your reaction to the death of Martin McGuinness. Well, I'm not altogether surprised. He's died now because when I spoke to him perhaps five weeks ago, his voice was incredibly weak. And that same evening, I saw him on television and he looked a shadow of his former self. So when I heard the news this morning, um, I was shocked on, a, on the level of uh, it being a man of his age uh, dying. But then having seen him and listened to him, I realized he was desperately ill when I did speak to him last. You've maintained contact with Martin McGuinness as part of the process uh, of setting up the foundation where you live, the Peace Foundation in your son's name. Um, can I take you back to when you first met him, though? How difficult was it to meet with someone who'd been so influential in the IRA, the group that killed your son? Yes, it was difficult. It was difficult, particularly for my wife, as Tim's mother. She was um, openly frightened of, of meeting Martin, but uh, I asked her, to meet him with me. I didn't think it was right that just I should meet him. So uh, we met him together and quite quickly we realized he wasn't an ogre, he wasn't a monster, he wasn't somebody to be feared. He was just another man who'd uh, chosen a different path in life from us. Um, but of course by the time we met him he had already been committed to the peace process for several years. And so we listened to him carefully I think we built a sensible and uh, mutually trusting relationship with him, and that's the way it continued. Some people would be um, amazed by the way you approached that, by the way you were able to, to rise above things. And um, it was Peter Hayne was saying earlier today, the former Northern Ireland Secretary, that McGuinness was able to rise above his past and create something different. Do you think McGuinness was a man of integrity? I think he was. In the last 20 years uh, of his life, I can't say for his early life. I mean, given that he was an IRA commander and very probably killed people uh, in the cause that he supported, I would have struggled to say he was a man of integrity had I known him then. But having met him in the most recent years, I believe him to be honest and truthful and totally committed to the peace process. So, yes, I would say uh, towards the end of his life, he was a man of integrity. Coming back to, to your personal loss, the loss of your 12-year-old son, Tim, um, I, I read, and I believe you once told me, that you, you can't forgive the IRA for what happened. But do you, do you blame McGuinness in any way? <clears throat> well, it, it's, uh, it's undeniable the IRA killed my son, so therefore I blame the IRA. And given that Martin was recognised as the second most senior person in IRA Sinn Féin at the time of the armed struggle then needless to say yes I would indirectly blame him What would you say to him if you could bring him back a final word, a final conversation what would you say to him? I'd give him great credit for, for his uh, conversion from fighter to peacemaker uh, I would tell him that he's made a major difference he's put Northern Ireland on the road to normality. It's not, by no means a perfect peace, as we all know it periodically has uh, setbacks. But by and large, through the work of him and unionist leaders like Ian Paisley, I think they were very brave in deciding the armed struggle was never going to be end the dispute. It would have just gone on and on and on with a higher and higher death toll. And Martin deserves great credit for being at the forefront of that change, even though he risked uh, himself in the eyes of some of his um, previous supporters who thought he was a traitor to the original cause. Uh, I know for, from him, uh, for a certain fact, that he was regularly uh, under threat of attack uh, from people who otherwise would have been his former allies. And his legacy, Colin, what would you say McGuinness's legacy will be? His legacy is... Um, it is only the peace process. I say that like it's nothing. It's, it's, it is the peace process. It's a peace process that will survive. I don't doubt that for one minute. It, it will wobble down again, uh, but over time it gets stronger and it's more deep-rooted, and peace becomes the norm for Northern Ireland. And the men, the men and women of violence who would drag it back will be increasingly marginalised and increasingly irrelevant. 
having said that, it still needs people to be active and vocal in their support. And, of course, I don't know who's going to come forward and replace Martin from the ranks of Sinn Féin. McGuinness went through a journey that few can imagine. You, Colin, and your family have been through, again, a journey that none of us can really imagine what it is like. What would your message be now, going forward, to the people of Northern Ireland, to the people who maybe criticise McGuinness? What would your message be? Probably nothing more than the fact that... Um the need for, for more killings and bloodshed, has, uh, that period is gone. I mean, there was never a need for it, obviously, from my point of view. But there's been sufficient progress politically. Uh, it's a long road, but been sufficient progress, progress to, to prove that negotiation and dialogue works, whereas confrontation and uh, attacks don't. And it's, it's a lesson, I would say, is relevant to today and the new forms of violence and the new forms of terrorism that we face today. Unless there's dialogue, and it's, it's a very basic principle, unless there's dialogue with your enemies and your opponents, there won't be any settlements or any disputes. And the Northern Irish former conflict is now uh, an ex-conflict, a past conflict, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I think the, the new conflict of today call upon us all to think of new ways in which we somehow close the gap between uh, the Western world, if you like, uh, and the world which would, would, would try to bring the West tumbling down. Colin Parry, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you for joining us here in France 24. Our regards to you, our regards to your family, and uh, keep yourself well. Thank you very much, sir, yeah, for joining us. Thank you. thank you. Thank you, Colin. Colin Parry there, whose son was killed in an IRA bomb attack in 1993. Colin Parry, of course, who met with and uh, last spoke to Martin McGuinness just five weeks ago, uh, giving us his thoughts on his legacy, on his uh, life and, of course, on his passing.